Lord, guys, Evangelist Rob here of Rob Woods Ministries, Brother Rob here. And guys, I had a dream the other night about a loved one that's gone on to glory, a loved one that loves the Lord Jesus Christ with all his heart. My cousin's husband, man by the name of Charlie, and he passed on a year or so ago, maybe a little longer. But in the dream, now listen, guys, come on, don't flip out in the comments. This is not necromancy. We're not conjuring. We're not talking to the dead. I know that people can tap into an illicit realm, an illegal realm where they're talking to demons that have familiarity or familiar spirits with the dead. The Bible says have nothing to do with the dead or people that read tarot cards or fortune tellers, white witchcraft, witchcraft, anything Eastern religions that are not in line with the Christian faith or the Bible. We always test the spirits, but now listen to this. In the dream, I seen this man. My God, he was dressed in white, completely dressed in white. And he looks so happy. Now, I, I believe the Lord can let me can bring, can bring a dream like that where I see a loved one that passed on into glory in their transfigured, glorified state. In other words, they shed this tent and they're now in the glorified tent. But I'm going to tell you something. When I woke up from this dream, it was so vivid and clear. And it marked me and changed me. Now, in the dream, he was completely in white. And he was so happy in the dream. I didn't talk to him. He didn't talk to me. We're not talking to the dead. I know some of these people do do this. And there are familiar spirits. And you've got to be careful. I'm just telling you, I've seen this man in heaven, in the heavens. And he was, dre and he was so happy. Guys, he was so. Now, when I shared that with my cousin yesterday, I believe it consoled her. Now, we knew he was with the Lord. This was a godly man that loved Christ. I'm just saying, she's been mourning and grieving. It's been difficult. It's difficult when someone passes on that we're really close to. They had a great marriage. But now, listen to this in Revelation chapter 3. The angel in the church in Sardis writes. These things says to he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, your name, you're alive, but are not dead. Now listen to this. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. Now I want, I want you to listen to me. Make sure you don't defile your garments. When I seen this man in the heavenly state in his glorified body dressed in white, was so happy. My God, he was laughing. Believe he laughed like three times, just like the whole, the joy, the hilarity. He was so happy. And so I, I'm telling you, it happened to me, man. It freaked me out. But listen, you have not defiled your garments. And I'm telling you, make sure your garments are white. Make sure you don't have defiled garments. Doesn't may mean that we Christians don't fall from grace. We're not perfect. We're forgiven. We're Christians under construction, but make sure you're walking upright by the grace of God, by the best of your free will, by the grace of God that enables you to live a holy and pure life. Make sure you don't fall under the, the, the demise. Because they asked Paul a question in Romans, shall we continue to sin so grace shall abound? He says, what, are you kidding me? It's No, 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 no. He said, forbid not. That's a whole other teaching. You have not defiled your garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. That's what I see him. I seen him because he overcame. Jesus said, be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. And be, so you can overcome because I already overcame. I seen him in the white garments. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I'll confess his name before my father 
and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, I want you to listen to this. If your name can be put in that book, this is also saying, I will not blot it out. So I'm telling you, the once saved, always saved message, I'm not all for it. You know, I stay neutral in a lot of this stuff. But I would err on the side. Listen, I know we didn't work for our salvation. I know it was by faith. It was by grace. Lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God. I'm just saying, if you live like the devil and start denying the Christ publicly before people, let me say it like this. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before your angels. If you deny me before men, I'll deny. I know some believers that were once on fire for Christ. Let me just say this to be nice. They hate Christ right now. I'm just telling you where they're at. They curse me out. They hate me. They hate Jesus. It, it, they're, they're, they're just blatantly in a rebellion. I'm not saying they can't come back. The Bible does talk about an apostasy. If someone falls away through the apostasy, were they saved in the fright? No, all the arguments I could argue these scriptures too were blue in the face. I, I, you know, come on here, man. You want to do this live? Let's not kid you. Anyway, I'm just trying to say I err on the side that we've got to walk with the Lord circumspectly and take an inventory and live with some sorrow and repentance. Not always because Jesus said you don't need a bath, you just need your feet washed. But when it says he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. I seen this man in this dream. My God, guys, he was in white garments. He was so happy that I said to myself, heaven is worth the wait. The Lord bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen.